Good afternoon. This is Justin Mullen. I'm the president of Hyatt Commercial. I'm excited to uh, join CityBiz here and all of the viewers. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I have the pleasure today of interviewing a, a friend and a bit of a mentor of mine, David Lilliflorn, who is uh, on the other line here with me. Dave, I asked you to do this interview because uh, in the last year or so, you've, you've gone from a very successful career with Constellation Energy um, and spent you know, many, many years there and uh, recently decided to kind of start or join a new venture in the uh, energy industry. And uh, I figure that's a good way to start the interview. Uh, give us a little bit of background on yourself and give us a little insight on you know, why you decided to make the transition. Yes. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate being here. Um, well, my journey probably started about 35 years ago in the energy sector. I uh, you know, going to the Naval Academy. I uh, started in 1988. And obviously, you know, uh, we, they teach us a lot about uh, engineering and, and energy here. Uh, and, and being uh, about eight years in active duty in the Navy, I got to learn on uh, diesel uh, ships, on gas turbine ships. So I got really involved in the engineering and, and, and how energy works and how it can be used in the military. And then I made a, a jump from there in 1999, I went over to GE uh, lighting in the manufacturing. So going from running ships, diesel and gas turbines, now I'm going to go make a, make lighting, uh, you know, for people around the world. I worked at two facilities. Uh, one was in uh, Lexington, Kentucky at an assembly plant. Uh, for making anything from tank lights, plane lights, you name it. Uh, and then I also went over and to make T12, the old T12 lights that you would buy in you know, Home Depots and the Lowe's. Uh, I was the uh, plant manager of that facility. And then uh, and in 2005, which is really the, the, the meat of my career, was I went to Constellation. And for the last 18 years, I had a variety of roles there in you know, director of projects, uh, director of asset management, uh, doing merger acquisitions and, and, and managing power plants. And all of that time, you know, in the energy sector, I've kind of had a, a long career. And then uh, this past May, I had the opportunity to take all of that, you know, that experience. Uh, and, and when the opportunity came to be able to take on uh, Sunracer and be the CEO uh, in the renewable space, uh, it was just something that, uh, you know, my career has been leading me to that. Uh, maybe I didn't know it at the time, but over the last, uh, over this time of my uh, career, it was just seemed like a right time with the relationships I've made over the years. Uh, the uh, energy is a small industry, believe it or not, like anything like Annapolis is small. The energy sector, believe it or not, is small and probably the real estate as well is a, is a small industry. We all kind of know each other and work with each other. So it was just the right time for me. And uh, it's a very exciting time uh, in, in the space. Yeah. And, and to that point, before we move on to your new industry, tell us a little bit about, about your role at uh, Constellation in particular towards the end. Cause that's when I started to really kind of ask you a lot of questions and, and start to try and pick your brain on some, some real estate things, you know, specifically kind of your role as kind of unwinding, you know, uh, decommissioned power plants and selling them off. Just give us a little bit of detail on that. Yeah. So you know, probably uh, when I, when the merger in Exxon in 2012, I, I took over the role as director of asset management. So there was three things I did, right. The M&A, and also like the strategy growth and execution on what are we doing with the old power plants that were decommissioning or just have been decommissioned and they're sitting there uh, under our uh, under our assets. And so one of the things I would do is put strategy around what do we want to do, repurpose them, sell them or, um, you know, just hold on to them to, you know, to uh, down the road for maybe a future use. And so that was where we kind of met. Right. So I was doing a lot of that transactional you know, repurposing. I've sold, I sold at least 14 retired sites around the country that were, you know, being repurposed. I've sold in you know, Boston, Philadelphia, uh, sold plants in Texas, uh, Maryland. And so, you know, it's, it's way of like, you know, taking an old facility and basically instead of just let it sit there for years, as we see some old sites have sat there, what can we do to make them, you know, to make them more valuable either for, for consolation at the time or sell them and have someone make them, you know, a lot of these uh, cases were mixed use, right? Making uh, hotels or, or apartments or or putting shops in there and seeing an old plant be re re revitalized is pretty exciting. I'll give you one example up in Boston right now. I know, uh, you know, the plant that I, back in 2016, we sold it. Now they're, you know, breaking ground uh, to uh, in South Boston. It's kind of exciting to see an old uh, Edison plant that was been around a long time, get revitalized and get new life in it. So. 
that's kind of what was my background at, at the end of the, my, you know, over the course of the, the, the end of my career there at Constellation. And then at the same time, just, you know, kind of segue to the future was uh, power services was something that we looked at and said, now that we have all these, you know, footprint around the United States, we have, you know, we operate power plants really, really well. How can we take that to third party operations? And by doing that, that kind of got me uh, doing that in the renewable space and kind of led into kind of me coming over to Sunraiser. And, and, and we could probably do an entire interview on kind of the business model and, and what your process was for unwinding those, um, you know, legacy assets. And, and in fact, I think I even tried to convince you at one point to start a brokerage career, just going around and selling those off, which I still think would be a great idea. But um, with that, let's, let's, let's kind of transition, you know, to your, your new role. So tell us what your title is at, 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 you know, at, at Sunracer and uh, what the business is and, and where it's headed. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm the CEO of Sunracer. I took on that role in May of this, this, this year. Uh, what we do is we bring, uh, you know, we provide renewable power solutions to large consumer and industrial companies. And the way we do that is through our large pipeline of, of projects that we have and also by with our alliance partners. And how that works is we will reach out to uh, developers that are doing early to mid-stage projects. They, might, they may need funding, capital funding. For, uh, and what we do is we provide that funding and take these projects to what we call NTP, Notice to Proceed. And what we'll do is work with developers and basically own and operate, to take, take the ownership of the sites and take them all the way through to construction and to commercial operations. And we will then own and operate those assets. And so there's developers out there that might be, you know, regional or might be even, uh, you know, national that will partner because what they see with us is certainty of execution. And that's one thing we like to bring at Sunracer is with our partners, uh, with our EPC, with our engineering, procurement, construction partners, with our O&M, which is our operations and maintenance partner. And then we also have strategic development uh, partners as well. And by creating those pipelines, we then can create these uh, portfolios like right now are currently at four gigawatts. We have a, a pipeline that we are actually uh, in the midst of constructing uh, and taking them to NTP. So we're very excited about working with developers around the country. Uh, we know that we have that certainty of execution with our partners, and that's been, been seen to be very attractive to people as we reach out to them uh, when we go out there and talk. And, and without getting too far into the weeds on that, because Again, I think that's something we could talk about, you know, for 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 quite a bit. Um, kind of transitioning a little bit from not necessarily the the details of the business, but to the the leadership of the business. And you know, you've spent um, you know many years, whether it was at the Naval Academy or for a large uh, you know energy company with you know well established, really you know heavy regulated. Um, you know, operations and, and, you know, execution was, you know, kind of came from the top down in a lot of ways. And, uh, and now that you're, you've kind of left that really structured or really established world, I should say, and now you're at the top and you're the one that's really creating the processes. And, and, you know, as we discussed before, you know, you're waking up every day and, and going, all right, what am I doing today? You know, tell us how that transition has been and, and you know what it's been like to go from that really structured to much more flexible. I need to go figure out how to do a little bit of everything today. Right. It's, yeah. So you, you, you know my you know my career pretty well. You go from Navy structure, GE kind of you know, and then going to you know, Constellation, a big company where we have a lot of processes and governance and oversight and and so forth. So obviously being in in that arena for a long time, you, you know. One of the things I was doing in my jobs is being, you know, uh, entrepreneur, you know, even in, in Constellation, being uh, being innovative and in how you look at uh, retired assets and, and growth. Uh, I've kind of taken that into this role by knowing that the, the company was, you know, started out small and we're growing is you got to be nimble, got to be agile. And so you got to understand it's all hands on deck. Everyone's doing a lot of stuff. But as you grow and grow that team, you got to bring processes in. You got to make sure it's scalable and one of the things I'm, I'm doing is taking all that history that I had with, with you know, with my career every day coming in and going, I, I know we got to be nimble. I know we got to be flexible, but as we grow, let's, let's, let's look at how we're going to grow the company. And that's what I'm bringing to the table now is 
you know, we're growing pretty fast. We're going to be doubled in size uh, in 2024. Uh, we have a large pipeline, which we're going to try to extend, you know, grow, double that as well, as, you know, in the next you know, two years. And so you need to be able to bring a team in that has processes, procedures, uh, and, and, and a system where it didn't exist before. It's kind of exciting to grow. I was growing's great, but it's also very challenging. Uh, and you just make you got to make sure the little things are, are done. It all counts uh, when you're bringing people in. So we're attention to detail uh, as we as we make as we grow is something that I've been focused on. And do you enjoy that part of the business? Yeah. You know, do you enjoy? Yeah. You because know, similarly, I went from being a broker, you know, doing transactions every day to running a company and having to create the processes to, for other people to succeed. You know, running transactions. Have you enjoyed that kind of transition? I'm loving it. You know, you, you, when you, anytime you get to grow a team, uh, I mean, you name it from, you know, we, the, what, what healthcare plan we're going to use. What's our, what's our travel policy? Just, it, just in the, you know, the details and growing that, you know, it, it, I do like it. And it, it's exciting. Uh, growing a company, something you believe in, something you've been doing all your career in an industry that you love. Uh, I mean, I, it's not a job, right? I wake up and I'm, I'm excited every day to, it's not even solving problems. I always tell people we're not solving problems. We're just, we're growing a business and, uh, and it's, it's exciting that way. And, and that actually leads into my next question. You mentioned growing a team and how much you enjoy that. You know, I, I'm really similar. I, that's what I love. I like bringing people together. Um, you know, go back to your days in college and, and tell us a little about your, your college, you know, experience at the, at the Naval Academy and, you know, as an athlete there, you know, tell us how that is kind of, um, you know, guided your growth in your career as well. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm talking to a fellow athlete, college, uh, college athlete as well. I, I will tell you, um, you know, football, I mean, my wife would laugh, but yeah, I told her she married a football player. She goes, no, I married, I married a naval officer. But I'm like, no, you might have made a football player, too. But I think the time in the academy was, uh, you know, for me, like anything else, you know, you learn a lot, especially the Naval Academy. You learn about, you know, teamwork. You learn about everyone has their roles. You, you know, you, you have adversity. You know, you, you want to, you, you want to let your person down left or right of you or your teammates. So, I mean, just the sporting sports in general and team athletics for me, it's, it's, it's about life, right? You take that through, through, through your whole life. And I kind of taken that, you know, how I look at things as a team, you know, you, you know, you celebrate wins and you, you learn from, you learn from your losses. Right. And so I've kind of taken that experience, the Forge the Academy, my time, you know, serving in the military, you know, it, you learn that, but I think football for me in the, on the, on the field, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, my friends to this day or the guys, I, my teammates, um, we get together at least four or five times a year for our football games here in Annapolis. And, you know, they're all doing great things and uh, it's kind of great to see that, but we've all kind of had that lesson at a young age on, on the field, how to learn, how to lead, um, you know, how to follow. And so it's all, all those lessons you get on, on, on the field has, has been very rewarding. And it's kind of taken, uh, I've taken that, uh, you know, into the well, one of the things I remember from, you know, youth football, because with the build that I had, I wasn't quite cut out to be a college football player. Lacrosse was more my thing at that age. But in youth football, I was, you know, looking back on it now, I always tell people, like, there's no other sport where you get to stop every 10 seconds and you pick up your best buddy and dust him off and say, all right, this is what we're going to do better next time and go do it again. Or he's picking you up and dusting you off and you get to plan and then go execute again. And, you know, for you with that and the Academy, I mean, the, the execution side of it and the leadership side of it, you know, it's obvious. I mean, I've known you long enough to know you're just a great leader and, um, and, uh, and, and we'll do, you know, great things with Sunracer, um, you know, kind of to, to come back to the business side of things, other than being a Naval Academy graduate, why have you chosen? I mean, obviously, Sunracer is going to be a a national, if not you know, multinational business. I'm not sure your plans there, but why did you choose Annapolis to be your headquarters? And and you know, is there something other than just you know living here about Annapolis and and Maryland in general that really draws you to this area? Yeah, you know, one of the things uh, that, that's a great question about just talking about Annapolis and you know being local here. You know, my wife, you know, from St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, I'm from down the road in Virginia Beach. You know, we, we did we didn't have any family here, but we, you know, our time here, I, I was here from 88 to 93. And then I came back with my wife. Uh, we were here in 97, 99. I was stationed back here. When I joined GE, we went to we left and then we were decided, like, where do we want to raise our family? Where do we want to live? Where, you know, we, we lived in Kentucky, Ohio and 
bounced around. And, and I said, um, you know, Annapolis, Maryland, you know, we both loved it. Uh, you know, I, I had strong ties, you know, from my time in the academy. We lived there once before. So coming to Annapolis in 05, um, and it kind of helps when you go work for Constellation, which, you know, the energy company at the time, I was very excited because it was you know, basically Baltimore. It's near Annapolis. It's in the industry I want to be in. It was like it was just calling us. And so having, you know, 18 years here, you know, and you know, in the business world, you know, down from D.C., uh, the, the, you know, this is a hot spot for you know, a lot of industries. Uh, it just made sense, you know, coming in here, being the CEO. Now, you know, having some... Uh, uh, backers uh, that, you know, uh, Academy friends that, um, you know, are, are part of this, you know, Sun Racer. Uh, it just made sense to, you know, that I'm here and we grow our team. The funny thing about Sun Racer in our industry, though, you know, we're, we're, we're all over the country, right? We're, we're right now we're in Texas and in Arkansas, for example, and, and we're, 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 we're all across the United States. That's where we want to be is that, you know, Annapolis is for me is, you know, we're, we want to get critical mass here. And, you know, as I grow the team, you know, it's a great place to live. When people come uh, from my team, uh, we have them from Scottsdale to Columbus to Denver, Nashville. My team's kind of all over the country. When they come, they go, this place is great. I go, yes, that's kind of why, you know, uh, my first leadership team meetings next week here. And uh, I'm very excited to have my leadership team coming into Annapolis. And and as we grow and get a footprint here, um, you know, is this going to make, uh, you know, Sun Race will be more part of the Annapolis family. And, and, you know, having a company headquartered here as well, you know, the one thing that um, that I always kind of, um, you know, tell our team is that, you know, the reason that, that companies either are either formed here or end up growing, moved here and growing is because it's a this is a C-suite community. You know, founders of companies, executives of companies, you know, want to live here for the quality of life. And, you know, as a brokerage company, we've not the, the commercial real estate business here is not big enough to really to really grow a substantial company but the relationships that you can build here can take you anywhere you know people with BWI in Washington DC you know you can get anywhere very quickly um you know in in any industry for that matter so you know it makes a lot of sense to me you know obviously being here myself um why you're in Annapolis well it's nice having BWI right up, you know BWI right up the road Easy in and out. Um, obviously, everybody next week. They, 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 obviously, the crab cakes are a big attraction. I, I, I bet I buy a lot of crab cakes next week when the team comes in. But yeah, you're right. It's uh, it is a very it's a great place to live, great place to have a business, and uh, you know, and it's also you know for my industry being where we are down the road from DC and and, and being down the road from Constellation, uh, you know, and having all that you know, relationships I have there. It, uh, there's a, there's a lot of synergy in this area. Makes a lot of sense and. Uh... Well, to not linger on too long here, I've got kind of two final questions that I'll ask you. Maybe you don't have quick answers, but maybe we can try. You know, the energy sector is is one of those things that we all participate in, whether we actively are doing it or just passively. You know, but but then we hear of interesting technologies and we go, oh, that's, you know, could that happen? Is there anything out there that you you could share with us that's like, you're pie in the sky. This is what's going to happen in our industry, you know. (laughs) <laughs> well, I will tell you this. I I, uh, I was very, uh, the, the last job I had Constellation was, you know, thinking about alternative uses for retired sites. And I had a lot of people come talk about different solutions. I will tell you, uh, you know, a couple of things that come to mind is ca- carbon capture. You know, right now, we, you know, Net Power is a plant that is, is a public company now. Uh, we were our initial partner there. We were doing the O&M. We were running the plant. It was a demo plant in Houston. And so doing, you know, carbon capture is something that you've all heard about. So that's obviously something that is emerging. Uh, we all know that hydrogen is something that, you know, is uh, also uh, up and coming as well with electric lasers and, and hydrogen blending with gas to reduce. So hydrogen is, is not going anywhere. That's getting a lot of momentum out of it. Obviously, you heard that. And then an interesting one that's, uh, we, that I was working with was fusion. You know, people go, oh, OK, what fusion well, you know, there's there's companies out there right now doing demo plant um, uh, that I know of that is doing a, a academy grad who's in that company, classmate uh, who's working on that. And we did some um, we actually sold them a, a turbine from one of our old sites to kind of support when they get that plant built. The turbine will do the initial start of the fusion re- reaction. So fusion is actually getting investment and headway as well. So 
I guess to answer your question, there's a lot of uh, innovation technologies uh, that are emerging because of you know the energy and what it means, and uh, it's exciting, and it's and it's getting a lot of people, a lot of energy in those sectors: carbon capture, hydrogen, and and, and fusion to a certain extent. I mean, there's very few industries that can change the world, you know, with one technology, you know, and so I guess it's a little bit of a you know, throw the spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks kind of uh, approach. Yeah. Obviously much more technical than that. Takes time and pressure and, 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 and dollars. <laughs> right. Well, I, right, and one last question for you, you know, is, is there anything that, that we missed, you know, about you personally and your life and kind of anything else interesting you want to just add to the discussion here? No, I just want to thank you, Justin, for, you know, you know, take, you know, reaching out to me and, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously this, uh, you know, one of the things we've been, uh, we've been friends for a while and you've seen me kind of grow and I just, I really appreciate that. And I think, you know, you know, it, it, we're very lucky to be in this, in this area, right. You know, grow, our, my, my wife, Patty, my three daughters, it's, uh, you know, my kids all grew up here. You're, you're raising your family here and it's, uh, it, it's a great community when we can, uh, you know, spread what we're all doing, help each other out. And uh, I appreciate you, uh, giving me the opportunity today. Absolutely. And, uh, Again, just want to thank City Biz for letting us uh, enjoy, you know, 20, 30 minutes together. And uh, for all the viewers that stuck around here until the end, we really appreciate it. Have a great day.